When you talk about cruising, there's usually one city that comes to mind first, not only because of its great weather, pristine beaches, amazing restaurants, and fantastic nightlife, but because it is known as the cruising capital of the world. That's right, it's the city of Miami, Florida. Hi everyone, it's Sharon and Jamie from Sharon at Sea Travel. Thanks for stopping by to our YouTube channel. Today we wanna to talk about one of the most popular cruise ports in the world, and that is the Port of Miami. Over 20 cruise lines sail over 50 cruise ships from the port's nine cruise terminals, making this the perfect port to start your search for your next cruise vacation. Even though the Port of Miami is one of the largest and busiest in the world, it's still one of the easiest to navigate. In today's port guide, we are going to cover traveling to Miami, where to stay pre-cruise, dining, and of course, a few things you might want to check out while you are in town. Plus, we have a few things you do not want to do while visiting Miami for a cruise. Miami International Airport is just under 10 miles from the Miami cruise port and depending on traffic, just a 15 to 20 minute car ride away, making it one of the most convenient places to fly into and cruise out of. But we know that sometimes travel is based more on your budget than just convenience. So when it comes to flying in for your cruise, we want to point out that although Miami is very close, there is also another airport option you could consider. The Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport is just 27 miles north of the Miami cruise port and a quick 40 minute drive down the I-95. So don't be afraid to check flights going into Fort Lauderdale as well for your cruise out of the port of Miami. Let's talk about booking flights real quick. As a travel specialist, I am always happy to help my clients find the best deals on flights. And there are a lot of tricks you can find online about how to get the cheapest flights. But the number one thing I tell my clients is don't be afraid to book your flights as two one-way flights versus a round trip flight. You don't even have to book these flights at the same time. You can book one flight and then monitor the prices for the other flight. We've done this for years and it has saved us a lot of money. Let me give you a quick example. American Airlines has a round trip flight for our family of four to and from Miami airport for a total of $17.68, about $4.42 per person. And that's a pretty good deal. But if we look at the same dates with a one way from Phoenix to Miami on American and a similar return flight home on Southwest from Fort Lauderdale to Phoenix, we get a total of about 1543. That's a savings of almost $224. I know you have to factor in the extra cost to travel to Fort Lauderdale, but when it's all said and done, you are probably still looking at almost a $200 savings for those flights. We almost always book our flights this way every time we travel. So don't be afraid to check those one-way flights and see where the best deals are. Hey Sharon, this seems like a great part of the video to remind the people watching that if they have a moment, could they please hit the subscribe button? And uh, while you're hitting buttons, don't make the other buttons feel lonely. So give a little tap to the thumbs up button and maybe a little love to the notification button as well so you always know when new cruise content is coming out. Don't leave those other buttons feeling lonely. Now, depending on where you fly into and where you decide to spend the night before your cruise, you'll have plenty of options for how to get from the airport to your hotel. Of course, if you fly in the morning of your cruise, there'll be cruise line shuttles you can take right to the cruise port from Miami Airport. And some cruise lines may offer shuttles from Fort Lauderdale Airport to the Port of Miami as well. As a reminder, we always recommend flying in the day before your cruise whenever possible to avoid any travel nightmares. From the Miami airport, you can get to your hotel quickly by taking hotel shuttles, taxis, or grabbing an Uber or Lyft. And you also have public transportation options. You can take a bus from the airport that'll get you into downtown Miami, but you might be looking at an hour or longer bus ride, so keep that in mind. Another option is taking the local train. You grab the Miami Mover Shuttle train from the Miami airport and you take it to the airport station, which takes less than 10 minutes. Then you hop on the Metro Rail that takes you to the downtown Miami area. Now remember, if you're using public transportation, do your research and your homework. Make sure you know where you were going and which stop is yours, or you might end up in the middle of an unexpected pre-cruise adventure that was not part of the plan. All right, now one thing we've recommended at other cruise ports that we don't really recommend here at the Port of Miami is renting a car. Now you can go ahead and do it if you want to, if you have some traveling you want to do or you want to go uh, outside of the Miami area, visit family, friends, something like that. But if you're just staying locally, we feel like between the hectic Miami traffic and the challenge of parking in the Miami area and probably the cost of it as well, we just think with all the other options available to you, maybe renting a car isn't the best for the Port of Miami. So in this case, 
not something we're going to recommend. So you have arrived in Florida for your cruise out of the port of Miami, but where do you stay the night before your cruise? Whether you fly into Fort Lauderdale or Miami, you really have all the same options. We like to stay as close to the cruise port as possible because we love only having a five minute drive to the ship in the morning. Right near the port, you can stay at the Intercontinental Miami, the Hyatt Regency Miami, the Hilton Miami downtown, and the list goes on and on. But one of the most popular spots for cruisers is the Holiday Inn on Biscayne Boulevard right across the street from Bayside Marketplace. The Bayside Marketplace is a great hangout the night before your cruise. At any of these hotels, ask for a room on a higher floor facing the port for a view of the cruise ship on cruise day morning. Now maybe you want to feel the sand in your toes. You can check out a hotel on Miami Beach. And depending on your budget, you can head over to the southern point of Miami Beach known as South Beach and have an amazing beachfront pre-cruise stay. You will have tons of hotel options, but if you are a go big or go home kind of cruiser, check out your beach view from the Ritz-Carlton or the Fontainebleau Hotel. There are also a few other hotel options just south of Miami in the Brickell and Coconut Grove areas that are close to dining and shopping. If you are a bit more budget conscious, you can check out the Blue Lagoon area just south of the Miami airport. We stayed at a Hampton Inn and a Hilton in the Blue Lagoon area and had great experiences at both properties. And of course, there are numerous other hotels right by the airport, which can be great options if you are getting into town a bit late in the evening. And by the way, if you've had a great stay at a Miami hotel before a cruise, please let us know about it in the comments below the video. Now, the Miami area is synonymous with amazing multicultural culinary experiences. Boy, say that 10 times fast. <laughs> No matter what dining experience you want to partake in, it can be found in Miami. Now, with that being said, we are a pretty simple family with simple dining needs. When it comes to free cruise dining, we are usually working within a budget and keeping it pretty low key because we're saving ourselves for all the food we can eat on the cruise ship. Sure, on occasion, we step it up a little and enjoy something local. For instance, on a previous trip to Miami, we had a great meal at Lombardi's at the Bayside Marketplace. The food, the drinks, the service, everything was awesome. But more often than not, we grab whatever's close by that has something for everyone in the family, and we're pretty happy with that. Fantastic dining is all over the place in Miami, and if you're looking for something special, you can search review websites online before your trip or open Google Maps on your computer and enter a search like Italian restaurants in Miami to see all the options that might be close to you. We don't have any fantastic recommendations for dining in Miami, but we do have something that will help you find dining close to your hotel. If you have a few minutes, check out our video on finding the perfect pre-cruise hotel and it talks about using Google Earth to look at the street view around your hotel to see what is within walking distance to where you're staying. Now pre-cruise entertainment in the Miami area isn't hard to find. Depending on the time of year, if you're a sports fan, you can go watch the Heat, Marlins, or the Dolphins. You can look into doing a little fishing with a private charter or jump onto a party boat, which might be a little cheaper and can hold up to 50 people in some cases. You can go play around a golf at one of the 45 golf courses within 20 minutes of Miami, Florida, which does include a number of public and municipal courses that hopefully won't break the bank. We mentioned Miami Beach earlier. You can grab the sunblock and head to one of the many Miami area beaches or venture out to a place like Virginia Key Beach Park or Key Biscayne. Don't get stuck thinking that Miami Beach is the only beach in Miami. You can check out all kinds of tours in Miami from food and drink tours, cultural city tours, and amazing sunset tours. Websites like Viator.com or TripAdvisor.com can get you started in your search for a fun city activity. And finally, we mentioned Bayside Marketplace earlier. It is a great spot right near the cruise port overlooking the bay with a marina, lots of shopping, real shopping, plus little souvenir Chotsky type shopping. And of course it does have places where you can get some of your pre-cruise incidentals. There's lots of dining options, including a food court that looked amazing last time we were there. Or you can spend the evening enjoying the sights with a cocktail in hand. And if you're feeling up to it, you can jump onto the Sky Views Miami Observation Wheel for an amazing look at the entire Miami skyline. Speaking of amazing views, and this is the last thing we're going to mention about the Port of Miami, and it's probably the biggest don't in this video. Don't miss what is known as the best sail away view in cruising. That's right, sailing from the Port of Miami can take your breath away. 
passing right by the other cruise ships, watching the city get smaller as you pull out of the port, and the view from the aft of the ship during the sail away is nothing short of gorgeous. So whatever you do, do not miss that Port of Miami sail away. You are so right, Jamie. The sail away is gorgeous for Miami. Just I know. It's like, it's the only place where we like look forward to just being out there and watching the sail away. Some places you're like, eh, you know, it's okay, whatever, but this place, do not miss it. We repeat, do not miss it. Well, that's all we have for you today. Hope this video was helpful and you feel a little more ready for your next cruise out of the Port of Miami. Thanks for watching. Happy cruising and we'll see you in the next video.